everyone, this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. Tonight I'm going to show you how I paint a, I guess kind of a different design for me uh, with uh, some mixed colors that I made using magenta and the uh, perfect purple. And we're going to go ahead and, and get started here with the paints that I'll be using are perfect purple. Magenta, light lavender, vintage white, happy green, moon yellow, and some thicket. Now, the tools that I'll be using tonight are a dotting stylus, number 12 flat brush, pat plod one stroke, and then I will be using a number 8 round brush and a number six round brush. Both of these are Princeton Heritage Series brushes. And then I will be using a uh, Deerfoot stippler. This is a number four. And then a teeny tiny number eight. This is also a folk art plaid one stroke brush um, as well. So tonight what I'm going to do, I've already cleaned this bottle, taken the the stickers off of it, cleaned it, used rubbing alcohol to get as much of the grease and grime off of it that I could, and hopefully that will help keep the paint on the bottle. The design that I'm using is kind of a I mean, it's not unique as far as the, some of the flowers that I'll be painting on here, but it's unique for me as far as some of the leaf colors that I'm going to be doing. I did mix up a, a color using the magenta and the perfect purple and got this kind of a purplish pink um, using the vintage white. Oh, I also I forgot. I'm using um, also in here the berry wine. These are all folk art products. Some of them are enamel. Most of them are multi-surface. I am trying to get switched over to all multi-surface, but I do still have a little combination here. Um, so anyhow, I'm going to dip my brush into this mixture that I made. And I'm going to go around the bottle, because I am planning to sell this as a lighted bottle. So I'm going to go around and what I'm going to start off doing is just basically touching, doing the touching and pull, just laying my flat brush out there and then putting in the strokes here. And as far as the center goes, I am going to leave that you know, an opening there because I will be tapping in the center. And I'm just going to keep going around the bottle and placing these strokes around the bottle. And again, this is just very easy. I'm pushing the petals down, or the, not petals, but the bristles down and then pulling towards the center. That's all. I'm just, again, just going to keep going around the bottle. It's a little bit different than just painting this on paper because my surface definitely is different than the paper. It's not just flat and straight. It's round and curved as I'm doing it on a bottle. And again, I'm just, just turning it and pushing the, the petals flat. And I sorry too, my furnace is on in the background again. I said it never fails. I can be working on painting a design and then it's fine. And then when I go to actually do the video, it's on. All right. So again, we're just going to keep sporadically, no certain pattern. And then I kind of like do a cross shape here when I'm doing this. And you can make your petals as thick as you want them or as thin as you want them. They don't have to be thick. 
They don't have to be thin. They can be whatever you want them to be. But again, I'm just kind of placing them out here around the bottle in different places just to kind of spread them out a little bit and hope that I'm not touching any of these to kind of erase them from my bottle. All right, what should I do here? Should I come up here with one? I might do that. Just very, very, uh, maybe just a little small one here. And like I said, you can you can put them in, you know, thicker, closer together. I'm just doing it kind of just sporadically placed them because there's going to be more than just these on here. But I might throw a little one in down here. I feel like it's kind of naked. And if you go around your bottle and you feel like you need more of something, then do it. Put it in. You don't have to stick with just one thing when you're doing these. And they don't have to be the same amount of petals either. Like I said, some of them are thicker, some of them are thin. It's just really, just kind of random here. Again, I'm just doing like a cross kind of uh, design at first and then filling in where I feel like it needs to be filled in. Maybe some shorter strokes, some light, longer strokes. Doesn't really matter. Now the next step is to actually stick your, stick your brush into the vintage white and then just go back over these and you can just just kind of just easily paint them you know with kind of pulling them like that if you can see and again I you know I don't give any specific guidelines because you can do whatever you want to with these you can actually make it to where it's just like color on one side but I'm actually going over both sides with it and making it like that. I stand out more than just the single. I guess if you can pull it out and just pull, cover the whole thing with one swoop, that's fine. Or you can do, you can do two. It's pretty either way. And again, they don't have to all be the same. Just keep that in mind. I like when they, there's some variance to it. Gives it some, some interest. And again, you just keep going over them until you get it the way you like it. Whoops. But you got to be careful like what I just did because I started to lift the paint, if you can see that there. So you don't want to work it too much. Definitely don't. You just come like that. Come over here. You don't want to have it too light. Again, just be careful that you're not lifting the paint too much. And that could be an indication that maybe I did not get all the grease and grime off that I wanted to. Not like that. And if you feel like you're getting it too white, like some of these are, and you could do this basically at the same time that you're painting it so that you don't have any of it quickly drying like I feel like this is done. At least parts of it. Not sure why. Only parts, but again, I don't want to don't want to get into mixing it or fussing with it too much because then it's going to lift. We can just blend these a little bit. And it's something too where 
if you want to go over these more than just once or twice, you can if you want to have more opportunities to blend. But again, you don't have to. You know, um, just carry on. And fill in where you feel like you need to. And on something like this, you could just do one side of it if you feel like it's dried too much and you want to come back in you could just do one side of it, blend it a little bit when you come back in with the original color but I think they're cute I like them to be just kind of fun they don't have to be precise or I guess that you can blend them in a little bit and that too gives them a little bit of a different look just leave it you know if you need to work it a little bit more I just make sure I just do light touching with it and not anything too hard or you will you know cause the paint to come up so just keep working it get the look you want it's okay I think it's fun I like painting on glass bottles I like painting on glass in general but look how much by adding adding some color to it and adding the white makes it stand out more. Oops, I think I did that the wrong thing. Go over here, let's do the same thing. And then come over here. And I'm sorry too, my I am a lefty, so sometimes it's hard to for people to see the strokes that I'm doing because I am left-handed. Oh, so it's still a little wet, which is good. And if you're someone who wants to try to paint and give some shading or give some indication of the li where the li light source is coming from you know feel free to do that with these I'm personally not worried too much about that when I'm painting this design but I know there are people that you know that is a big deal for them so by all means you know feel comfortable doing that go ahead and Throw that in here too if you want. Yeah, my thing is just trying to make easy painting. It's meant to be easy. It's meant to be fun. I guess fun is the main thing. And that's what I want you to have when you're when you're doing the paintings that I that I'm showing you. I want you to have fun with them. That's the main object of my videos. And maybe it be even a situation where you get your friends together and you do some painting. And so I used to have a group that we got together and did crafts. A group of friends and it was fun. Very uh, great, uh, great girls' night out. We actually used to meet at a place where we did mosaics, and that was probably some of the best times I've had actually with my friends. It's just getting together, having fun, laughing, and and doing some art.
doing some artwork. That's why I'm just kind of lightly hitting it. I'm going to leave that alone. I hope you're enjoying this. I am. Now it's a little bit different my video tonight because I'm actually painting the entire bottle and not just part of it because on a lot of my other videos because I'm washing the item off and not selling it I don't do the whole bottle I just do the front and call it a day but because I am actually uh, going to be selling these my practice here is to do the best I can with them and do, do the painting all around. Now if you're someone who wants to get into doing this, feel free. I know I've had people ask in other groups and such, like, where did you get your bottles at? Well, my bottles are bottles of wine that we didn't drink, but I know somebody's remark was, I get them out of my neighbor's, neighbor's recycle bin. Now, if you don't want to do that, if you have relatives that drink, hey, ask them to save, your, save the bottles for you. The only thing I do want to mention, though, is ask them to rinse them out, because they can get pretty nasty if you don't. And I'll tell you, I experienced that a while back. I was doing things with wine bottles and asking people to do that, and they didn't clean them out, and I'll tell you, they were, they gagged me. I mean, I just couldn't do it. Ended up throwing a lot of them out. I recycled them or whatnot. Because I just couldn't, couldn't handle the, because they get moldy. I couldn't handle it. Like that. Okay. So now I got that part done. You can do one of two things. If you want, you can go ahead and, and uh, paint in the, the centers, which I'm going to go ahead and do. I am just putting in, sorry here, putting in my stippler. I know this is so high. My stippler into the yellow, and I'm just tapping it like that. That's how I'm loading it. No biggie. And then I'm going to just tap this on the bottle. And I'm not put, at this point putting any other color. And I, I honestly don't have plans to put any other color in these. I'm just, again, just going around whatever center I have is how big the center is going to be. And probably determine pretty much what the shape is going to be of it. This is probably one of the easier centers I've done because I don't want it to be anything real extreme or fancy. This is going to be pretty big. It's a pretty big opening. And if that bothers you, then pay attention and, and make your centers a certain, a certain dimension. You know, I don't really, I wasn't really concerned with that too much, so I am just doing, doing them however size they are, whatever opening I have, and just going to keep doing this here, pray that I don't touch any of it, because I'm really good at that too, putting my fingers in my in my designs as I'm painting. Alright, so I'm just tapping this, getting the centers in, real easy. And I do believe I, oops, I forgot one up here. I did miss one. That's why you kind of swing it around and check. Make sure that you get them all that is important. All right, now that I have the centers in, I am going to go on and do my next 
flowers, which I am doing with a little round brush, or sorry, flat brush. It's the number eight, and I'm going to basically, I am double loading my brush. Now, I'm not going to show you this the entire time, but I'm basically on this one just tipping in on both sides the actual color and then I'm just moving it back and forth. As I paint I will just keep dipping and maybe doing a blunt, the blending strokes and go, keep going. Okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and we'll put a few of these around the bottle. Probably not going to do as much as I had in my in my um, actual my actual sample picture. I'm just going to do a few around the bottle. Again with the shape being different it's it's kind of different to do this. What I had planned may not be exactly what I do on this. And I want these to be as opaque as I can. See what this? I'm just swinging it around just putting it down and swinging it around. Maybe a five petal, four petal, just whatever petal amount you want it to be. You can have them all going with the dark purple on the outside. If you want to swing it around, you can do that and have the lighter color going on the outside. Doesn't matter. So I'll just put patches of these periodically around the bottle. Now these really aren't that opaque, but if you're concerned about that, you can go back over them and make them more so. And I'm just going to keep going here. I like to work in threes, but I'm going to probably do some as two. And you can actually do some as one if you want. I'm just kind of putting these in. I hope you're seeing what I'm doing. Again, I'm not going to probably put a lot of these on here. I'd rather get some of my greenery in here. Just put some around the bottle. Just enough to show that you've got another flower on here. Which really, I keep wanting to dip the other side in white, which would be pretty. Oops, I did. did that one backwards. Oh, I don't want that. I'll fix it. I'll put a little bit here. What's going on that one, which is fine. I'm just doing on this one, just doing some tapping. Getting them in there. doing. I don't want to do too many on one side. I might just throw some in here and then call it, call it on this part. Now I'll just see that as a four petal. All right. I know, like I said, you could get probably crazy with this. I might put some down here. And I, I could find myself probably doing that, getting 
kind of silly with it. It's gonna drive me crazy. Like, oh, I don't have them all. I don't have enough of them on here. I should have. All right, let's just do one more. One more of these. I like that. Okay. Then. But the centers for these, I am using the Vintage White, so I'll go on and dot it, and just keep turning, just very simple, simple centers on this one, on this product, or project, I should say not product, simple, 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 I'm going to get my wine bottle back over here, so you can see what I'm doing. And what I did, what I'm going to do on the centers here for the, the bigger flowers, I'm going to dot with the vintage, the vintage white. And I'm just doing that just sporadically like that. And we'll just go around and put those, put the little dots all over here. And just um, part of the flower. You know what I mean? It's not going to be like all around it. It's just going to be primarily on part of the flower. Like this. Primarily like that. I'm going to put some in there where it kind of kind of spread a little bit earlier. Oops, I just really want to hit the other side. I'm getting a little nervous here. So I'm so bad about doing that. And I want it to be pretty. And I am just doing one side. Like I mentioned, of each of the big flowers. And just picking up where I think it should go. You know, you just kind of have to use your own, your own imagination, I guess, and where you think it should be. I'm not going to tell you that it should always be on the right side or the south side or the north side or you know however you're looking at it I'm not going to tell you that because I think you need to see and fill it with your own instinct of where you think it needs to go all right so then with that I did in my sample I don't get too stuck on this put some dots on the the little purple flowers but some yellow and this is just to you know just give it some more interest it can stand out a little bit more I'm doing that in the moon yellow that one has a lot you know at least four or five dots I would say I think that's a good good amount and I'm just kind of dotting it around the center but in no specific place. They can be just kind of sporadic on the actual flower itself. And you can put more on there if you want. I like dots. Any of the parts that I'm doing right now, or well, actually whenever I do a design, if it's something you don't really like, if you don't care for dots, if you like it with just the simple center with no dots, um, or no additional dots around it, that's fine. Not something that you have to do. 
but may, basically when you're doing this, just make sure you go around the bottle and check it out to make sure that you did the dotting on all the flowers. So I'm really good about forgetting, forgetting some of them. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, and honestly, I don't think I'm actually using this number six now that I'm thinking about it. I'm trying to think if I did the number six uh, round brush. I think I'm, I'm not using that, I don't think. All right, next thing I'm going to do, and hopefully it'll work because I have been doing this for a little bit tonight, is doing the, the these leaves and I'm basically on this touching into the white and you're probably going to think what the heck but I'm tipping into this purple, the burgundy, the berry wine and then doing blending strokes and also this color here doing some blending strokes and then I'm going to paint. Now I'm just going to probably do a few of this type of uh, leaf because I feel like I'm running, sorry, running a little long here on my video. But basically I'm just doing wiggle, 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 wiggle and pulling it back in. Again, I don't want to re overwork it too much or it's not going to do well. And then bringing it back in and then doing this and then there we go. I'm going to reload my brush, do my blending strokes and I'm going to come down here and do it again. So I'm wiggling it but I want to make sure that I'm getting a good coverage here. So I'm just wiggling it up and down and pulling it back like that. But that has a little bit too much purple on one side. So let's go and do that one again. If I can get it. Get it in here good enough. Get them to match a little bit better. And then pull it up here. I just don't want to work it too much to where it ends up coming off. Like that. A little bit different, like I said, than my my other, my other leaves, but I will be putting green leaves on here, so don't, don't fret. Those are to come. You know I'm a leaf person. Okay, so here we go. Come like that, come like this. Now I can come back down. If you can get it, that's the problem I'm having is, is making sure that I get it good, but I'm going to and you might think like this. So I want to make sure again that I'm getting them all nice and in there and then I'm going to pull my stem through it. This one looks like I must have added who knows. Who knows what. Alright, so that's going to have, have this kind of a leaf sporadically around here. Again, I'm not going to try to do like a ton of them but I want to do some because it is different for me to do. Put that in the white, do my blending strokes. And then if I can do it, oh crap. I did that kind of the opposite direction here, didn't I? Did I not? Yes, I did. Let me get my bottle right. <laughs> What the heck I'm, doing. I'm going to end up sticking my fingers on it. I just know it. All right, Amy, what are you doing? Oh, shoot. I know I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm trying to get it blended a little bit. It's a little bit, whoops, a little bit more, what the heck, a little bit more purple in here. I think it's got more of a purpley look. And I'm doing here and doing that. And then I'm going to come back over here and do this part again just to kind of bring it together. I just want to make sure that I have it a good coverage is the main thing. 
mat that I have to have uh, perfect coloring. I don't really know about that too much, but I I just want to have some of this flower. I wish I had a better handle on this. Hopefully, hopefully you saw that. I'm sorry. I'm so into wanting to get this done right and I'm messing it up. It happens to the best of us, just so you know. If you're new, you'll know that there'll be times where you paint something 500 times and then one night you're painting it and you think, for God's sakes, I can't paint it at all tonight. I have had that happen to me before when I was painting large, large, large orders and I would seriously come into my workroom, start painting them and I'm like, I cannot paint these. I cannot paint these tonight to save my life. And I'd have to just say, I'm going to bed. So just so you know, even people that have painted a lot can have some what the heck moments. And I kind of have those periodically. I do, I do, I do. And I want to get this a little bit thicker right here. Okay. Alright, let me see how many of these I've put in here, because I don't want to put too many as I mentioned, but I did want to have some because I do have those in my in my design. So I just put some sporadically around. And let's see. I might want to put one one more up here. Oh, where am I doing it at? Right here. Let's do it this way. It's gonna come down. Do it like that. Hold on. Maybe you'd be able to see it. I want you to be able to see it. Okay, I'm coming down. I'm going to come up here for this one and then up there for that. Do it again. And I'm going, whoops, wrong direction here, Amy. That. Uh, and then here, I don't know, I did tip that, oh, I have been tipping it in my white, I don't know what the heck I'm thinking, I think I did more blending now before, I'm going to put a little stem through there, so we have them, alright, so then, the next thing we're going to do is put the actual real green in, and I think because I'm, uh, I'm painting this on a green bottle, I am going to need to probably reverse the colors how I have them. But basically on this, oops, I am putting my one side in there and then just going it back and forth, dipping it into some yellow, doing some blending strokes, and going on about my business. Okay? The strokes I'm doing, and I think I'm going to have to reverse this and do it the opposite direction, but I am going to be doing leaves like this. Again, hopefully you can see them, and they're going to be kind of a roundish shape, but I'm just slightly wiggling my brush and coming back. And I'm going to do another stroke. And I, the reason I'm putting the lighter green on the outside as opposed to the way I did my actual sample is the more I thought about it with it being a green bottle, they'll show up better going this direction as opposed to me doing the green. The dark green, I should say. They're both greens. Let me do a lighter stem in here so you can actually see it. Alright, so then I'm going to go around and do some of these. Make sure I get them the right direction and just I'm just just very quickly wiggling it. Just very quickly. And then coming over here and doing the same thing, just very quickly coming up and then wiggling it back down again. And do this one again. Wiggle, 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 wiggle and then come back and wiggle 
like that. Bring a stem and bring another stem. Oops, I did the wrong direction. Back in here and fix it. There you go. All right, I'll just keep doing these. Get some more um, leaves on here. Have some go in this direction too. Like I said, there's really no no direction as far as you know where you plant these. You plant them where they you think that they're going to look nice. That's about it. And if you go over your flowers, that's fine. Because in nature, as I always say, not everything's going to be lined up perfectly. It's going to overlap. You're going to have some of that. Okay, so we're going to just do some going up the bottle here. I'm going to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Have it come back just wiggling real lightly. I'm doing it this direction. Wiggle, 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 just real fast, wiggle, a real fast wiggle, and I want to do a point, and then come back down. And then I'm leading, or putting in it the lighter stem so that you can see them. Okay, I'm going to put some down here, I have some coming out this direction. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And then do some going this direction. Wiggle, 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 <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to be annoying. Alright, so I'll keep doing that. And then I'm going to add this, my favorite filler leaves, which are the one stroke little easy, 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 easy little leaves. They're good fillers. Good fillers. But I do want to try to get as much on this bottle because it will be lighted. And I think that will make it look really pretty with the lighting. I really do. I love lighted bottles. I really didn't, really didn't think too much about them until recently, and it's like, oh my gosh, I think they're gorgeous. And I like lights, anyways, like for ambiance, just to relax. It's such an awesome way just to decompress. Mood lighting. Who doesn't need mood lighting? And there's so many ways to do mood lighting, but this is just such a simple, a simple way to add it. It really is. All right, so let's go to the, the one stroke, my easy peasy one stroke leaves. Okay, I'm just going to sporadically put these babies in here. I don't care if I'm going over anything with them. And I could do the do the stems in a lighter green, but I am just going to be putting these bad boys all over the place, filling them in, filling in this bottle so that there's not a lot of green or not a lot of unpainted space, I should say. And sorry if this video is running long. I appreciate you sticking with me on it though. I was half tempted through it to make it a uh, make it a two-parter, but I thought no, I'm not gonna do that. I feel like a lot of times people don't come back and watch it. But I do, I want I want this bottle filled up. So that's what I'm doing. Alright, we're getting close here, guys, I promise. I promise, promise, promise. You know, it's any time that you're painting something, if you 
you know, paint it, and then you just take a step back and say, hey, does it need anything else? Is it missing anything? Should I put more on it? Should I put less on it? I personally, like with what I'm doing here, feel like the more the merrier because it will be lighted and that gives off such a pretty, pretty picture, if you may. It really does. I have one that I decided I'm keeping for myself. It's one of the ones I did as a sample for everybody, I like a video. And when I put the lights in it, I love it. And I'm like, I gotta finish painting the outside of this so that I can keep it for myself. Because it's so darn pretty. I mean, they're great even as like a night light. Now, it's not something because like the lights that I have are battery operated. So it's not something I would want kids to have access to. You know, batteries kind of freak me out when it comes to children. But you could still have one in a kid's realm. It's not that it's unsafe as far as having in there. It just would need to be out of their reach. So if you ever think about doing doing these for a realm, a child's bedroom or whatnot, you know, that's fine. But I would not have it down where they could get into it. I really, I really wouldn't. Because I would be concerned about, you know, that happening. They just don't need to have access to, to batteries. Because I'm trying to think, yeah, with these, they're not... I can't remember how they slip in. But I think they slip in fairly easily to where a child could probably get them out. The look again. I'm not sure. I'm saying that, but I'm not really sure how it works. Okay, I'm getting close to being done here. I know I said that just a little bit ago, but I'm just kind of looking it over, see if there's any spots that I really need to put some leaves in. Again, as I always preach, if I like leaves, if you are not a leaf person, don't want to put as many leaves in as you see me doing, then don't. Please don't feel like you have to, because you don't. And I just love it. All right, I think I'm going to stop for now. I'm going to let you take a look. Quick peek. Again, I can just, you know, step back and look at this and say, hey, if I want to add anything else to it, I can. And I will give you a peek at it with lights in it. I don't know what that is. That's on the inside, maybe. But I think it's pretty. Those purple leaves and such are just gorgeous. All right. I think we're going to stop for now. If uh, you're new to my channel, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell. When you're done viewing this video, please make sure that you hit that share button that's below the video and share this on your social network with all your family and friends. I'd love to hear your comments on this if you like it. Um, any suggestions? Again, I always like to hear if you have any special tools you like to do with your glass painting. Love to hear from you. All right. Well, thanks again. I appreciate you so much. And until the next time, you have a good one. Mm -hmm.